can hit the hand, but I don't know if it's going to be effective enough. And the same thing with Soren. Like, Soren doesn't really interact. I don't think it interacts reasonably well, unless he can gain a huge chunk of life to get out of range of multiple calibrated blasts. Yeah, what do you think? Kind of what, uh, that's kind of what Spike and I were, were thinking, is that, like, it could matter if you specifically get the turn three out. Spike was saying kind of the big things to look out for is smallpox on turn two mm -hmm. into Soren uh bane ripper on turn three that would be kind of like the ideal nut draw you know yep. not really seeing exactly that but i'm kind of with you you can't really thought is the top of the deck here with this deck. and with even this if you spike deck. yeah even if you thought sees calibrated blast like it's still coming back it's got flashback wow. for five mana it's it's gonna still like you know quote unquote combo off the one card combo yeah as you say that cling to dust is like oh is it oh that's true <laughs> yeah no, <it's>, <laughs> That's that's Magic the Gathering for you. You know, there we've got cards for all sorts of situations, even if you don't think that they're useful in the matchup. That yeah, cling to dust right off the top. Amen to that. Yeah, cling to the dust, gonna be able to clean up that calibrated blast later. And now looking at Corbin's hand, we see just I believe that's a bunch of gemstone caverns. Corbin's got yeah. all the alternate art lands, uh, which we just gotta love, you know. I mean, because of course you and I both know every single one of these alternate art lands that are in play right yeah exactly <laughs> <laughs> you got a count you might as well bling it out exactly yep that and honestly i did the same thing i did all the special versions uh as well here so here we go we see that really sweet trick with flagstones as you're able to go fetch up a land as well as keep one of your flagstones in play and with the new surveil lands gets to pitch up one of those and uh get a liliana to start ticking away at the graveyard here a little bit I wonder if there's going to be enough time to tick the Liliana up to six ultimate and then really put Corbin back super far back for that. Even if, well, I mean, we know the calibrated blast is is being dealt with with the cling to dust, but at least chop half the lands in half. Yeah, I, I would think it actually could come up um, a decent amount here as, uh, you know, Spike's not going to be winning fast. So if he's going to be winning, mm -hmm. it's going to be this kind of later game uh, presence here. And uh, yeah, we're just going to see, I would imagine, Cling to Dust get fired off right now on the Calibrated Blast. Um, and Spike was talking to me a little bit about this, and we were kind of talking about your deck as well. And the fact that, you know, most modern decks deal themselves two, three, five damage with mm -hmm. fetch lands and duels and stuff, kind of none of us are doing that. You know, I a little bit with my fetch lands, but I have Leyline where I'm not yeah. taking any damage. So, you know... This calibrated blast deck does have to hit you twice at the very minimum against all of us. Funny thing, it's so awkward for Corbin as Liliana ticks up. He didn't he didn't want to discard Emrakul because it would shuffle his calibrated blast back. So he has <laughs> to discard a land, and then it gets the the calibrated blast gets clinked to dusted anyway. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A really strange interaction there. And uh, you know, Corbin's hand just casual 30 converted mana value right now with two cards you know you gotta you gotta love it mm -hmm. coming in for two with the spirits yeah, that, is cal would... that is calibrated blast range definitely calibrated blast god that is a tongue twister say that 10 times fast right right, right yeah now. you're all right <laughs> but uh spike's got to be feeling pretty good that there was not a calibrated blast fired off at the end of his last turn. So it's got to think, unless you top decked another one right now, there's probably not one available. So mm -hmm. uh, seeing Emrakul go away and then the one ring is going to follow up and have a, a turn of reprieve. But how deep are you going to want to go with the one ring on this? You know, like, do you want to just draw a card every single time, Nikachu, or what? I have no idea, especially since whatever you draw, you definitely want to be casting immediately before Liliana the Veil eats it up unless uh, it's going to get ultimated next turn. But you still have to close out the game. Like, basically, a Calibrated Blast is going to be le like more or less lethal no matter what. So maybe you just try to dig for at least one more creature to close the game out one turn earlier. Because Corbin's in top deck mode. If he top decks the combo, it's over. Yeah, and here was a really cute interaction uh, that kind of happened a little fast there, is that Cling to Dust actually with the Ember Cool trigger on the stack exiled a creature to go from 15 to right. 18 plus these two spirits coming out can put a spiring spike down to 16 16 the last time I checked is not 15 damage so exactly. spike is very safe on this turn uh for to be able to ultimate Liliana here 
Yeah, what a great play. He's a master. The master of all Dax, all types. Amen. Amen. The modern king, that is for sure. Uh, I learn a lot from aspiring Spike stream. <laughs> uh, Haven't we all? <laughs> so yeah, went one to Liliana, one to face to just be able to control the ultimate. I love that. And now, I mean, have the choice to just play Scion if it's available. Let's see, Rafine's Tower is three types. Urborg is still just three types. So yeah, it actually can't be cast. Awkward. Uh, as it would cost six. Well, Tudor's got to be good here. Tudor's for Soren. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, Tudor's lightning. for Lightning Helix, basically. That's right. <laughs> Soren has the ability. Tick it up, Sack a Cre. Sorry, is it Sack a Vampire? Is it? It is Sack a Vampire to Lightning Helix, or you put a counter on one of your vampires, which also gains three lights. So I think we're gonna see, and you know, um, nicely enough, Bloodgast is a vampire in this deck. So mm -hmm. you're either gonna see that, or you can just sacrifice the Bloodgast and replay the land. Kind of both accomplish the same goal. Uh, looks like Spike's going for the the second one or the latter. Looks like Spike is coming out super far ahead now. Yeah, I think this looks like GG. Spike just making sure he's going to stay above 15 life. The spirits can't do any kind of damage and has lined up lethal now on the crackback, even if the spirit stays home. So no matter what, Spike right. should be able to uh, take this down. And that's game number one. And the myth, the legend, aspiring Spike. Very nice, very clean. Not not exactly what we expected, but we do know that there's still tons of play out of this aspiring Spike Pox deck. The one thing I'm seeing here, Nikachu, is just Dothy Voidwalkers coming in immediately. And Spike was telling me this. Spike just says all he wants to do in this match is thought sees an Emrakul with a Dothy on the battlefield. Oh! And uh, just get that one into play. Woo! What a line. <laughs> yeah, let's hope we see it. I mean, that is just <laughs> way too awesome. It's going to be a clip-worthy play, yeah. that's for sure. Yeah, that was one of the best clips from the Pro Tour of the Lord of the Rings was Christian Calcano against Jake Beardsley. I was telling this to Spike earlier, mm -hmm. uh, you know, where Calcano got Thoughtseize with the Dothy in play. There was an Ulamog there, and Calc just threw his hand at him like, yep. I bet you're going to take this one. Yeah, it ended up being an easy GG, of course. Dothy Voidwalker. What an all-star. Yeah. Okay, there is a couple Dothys. There's a small pox, which can slow down Corbin quite a bit, as well as a Liliana for Spike. That looks quite strong. Now, I'm not going to lie, Nikachu. I have no idea what that land does. <laughs> oh, the Academy has something to do <laughs> The uh, the academy, of course, but the Nephalia Academy. The speller ability opponent controls causes you to discard a card. Yo, that's all I can read from here, so I'll have to look this one up. But I would assume you just don't have to discard. That would be my guess. Get that one up on the screen. There we go. You may reveal that card and put it on top of your library instead of putting it anywhere else. All right. Nice. So you can't thought seize the top of the deck, but you can thought seize to put the card on top of the deck. <laughs> <laughs> love it. Love it. Love it. Love it. So we did see Urborg come into play for Aspiring Spike very early. That did have the ability to have the Academy tap for black as well instead of just colorless. Not the biggest deal. Um, but it does look like Calibrated Blast is just online and probably going to be fired off right now. At instant speed, of course. Make the ice is a spicy one here. That is, that has the ability to deal with land that could add colorless. So Sunken Citadel, if Spike has the vibe that there's only one way to produce red mana, I guess you go for that unless I'm mistaking something. That a snower could produce colorless. I'm going to go after the Academy. Uh, so Thoughtseize is now back online. Or more importantly, Liliana of the Veil and maybe Smallpox. Yeah. Interesting, but I think if Spike had perfect information, would have hit the Sunken Citadel. Yeah. Um, as I believe that does add colorless as well as add mana. 
Um, but wow, goes for the 15 damage on the Dothy. What is that? So that's interesting. So Spike does have the ability to sacrifice it now, and anything that was put to exile, um, you can you can cast. So right. calibrated blast. Maybe we can look at the exile. Looks like it is only the calibrated blast. <laughs> <laughs> Spike's calibrated blasts are going to look a lot worse. That was profane tutor. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was a good old goose egg. <laughs> we have Ahsoka Zen. Uh, uh, calibrated blast back online. Another nice top deck there, Nikachu. Just being able to have the three mana available to calibrated blast once again. Um. Now, this won't be gaining any life with this cling, but it does draw a card. Yeah, it still deals with the second half of that combo. Yeah, and as it stands, here is Smallpox. So this Calibrated Blast is going to be fired off in response. And with Smallpox dealing with one of the lands from Corbin, there's no way to just straight away top deck the win. You know, because yeah. there's not an untapped land, so you can't just top deck another calibrated blast and get it done here. So Corbin needs to draw multiple things. And while this is happening, you know, uh, Spike can get on the board. What is Spike's next play? It's going to be a Dothy Voidwalker? Yeah, just the Dothy. Gets to sacrifice the flagstone so Smallpox isn't as impactful. Could be a Liliana. A oh, no. Goes for the Scryland. Yeah, and oh. the land, I, I believe, comes into play tapped off Flagstone anyway, so really the only right. option. Dothy here, and now the thing, though, Spike is definitely ahead as he has cleared away any immediate threat of Calibrated Blast, but one blast off the top is just going to be GG, as well as Aspiring Spike just does not have a huge clock here, so, you know, I think Corbin's going to have the time. Well, you know what? I thought that in game one, and it didn't really work out that way at all. Because, <laughs> you know... <laughs> It's, uh, what, how, so like, what, what's the clock? I guess it's five turns. That's like drawing something like four cards for Corbin. Oh, baby, there's thought season. That can take a shadow of mortality, which can then cast a shadow of mortality here. The clock has just gotten faster. Yes. And or I have... believe shadow of mortality does indeed have cycling. It could be, maybe not. It does not. Okay, okay. I don't. I don't know what I was. Oh yeah, Scion, um, could give it life link. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So it just goes for the life link on the Dothy. Just thinking that that is more important to start gaining enough life. And oh, now, it. if it's calibrated blast, it's GG. We can get to sixteen. Stop. We're in safe range. What a silly match. So Aaron Mace off the top. Cyan of Draco and Shadow of Mortality. That's the only options to be cast here. And that Calibrated Blast is just hanging out. Yard here. You know, I figured the Cyan of Draco would be a lot easier for Corbin to cast, but actually it has been quite awkward in both these games. Yeah, definitely. It's, it's a card that's incredibly tough to cast in this deck. There's just so many lands that don't produce... Mm -hmm. Or have any type whatsoever. Yeah, it seems seems closer to impossible than uh, to likely. There's like one stomping ground, one blood crypt, one. Well, there's yeah. the Rafine's Tower. There's there's an, a few cards in Magical Christmas Land. Maybe if you can get them all together, you can play your sign of Draco on turn two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't even know if that is possible because you got to be able to get Domain on turn two. I think the best you can hope for is just casting that for four mana. <laughs> <laughs> which is fine you know format of 4-4 with some cool abilities definitely reasonable but all right there's the stopping ground so rafine's tower plus stopping ground can get it done and stopping ground with the urborg makes it cost six still can't cast anything quite yet yeah it's still like two mana off basically oh there's the blood ghast that's huge yeah Bloodgast is very strong, but I think this turn for Spike just has to be spent to cling to the dust, the calibrated blast, just so that yeah, right. the top deck land is not GG. 
Keep everything under control. Yeah. There's a million lands in these decks. No kidding. No kidding. Yeah. Losing to just a top deck land instead of losing to one of the two calibrated blasts. Um, definitely more important. Of course, there is the Cascade spell as well. So it's a little more than two outs here for Corbin, but this is a huge draw step. The shields are down, and it pretty much has to be here. Get it done, and ooh, another soaking in. Believe that makes tokens. Yeah, it makes two one one. So you know, Corbin can just get that in to like pester Soren a little bit, or start attacking to get some damage in. Um, that's really the only option here. Still can't cast any of the two giant creatures. Like we go. Yeah, but fortunately, he's still alive to top deck uh, a Calibrated Blast, so it's not over. No, definitely not. Still has some time. Spike was not able to top deck anything super meaningful to kind of start closing the door here. Here we see the super powerful engine of just, well, discarding your blood gas. I mean, that's a combo we've seen you know, for a long time. Yeah, right. Oats to animate the Muta Vault. Are we sacking the Muta Vault? The second, the mutable. Are going upstairs oh. with that. Sacrificing Dothy. What are we gonna find here? There's a lot of cards oh. exiled. Let's see what the, the hit is gonna be here. Yeah, what's the choice? Okay, it's gonna be a shadow of mortality. Yeah. This what this does, this presents a lethal clock here. It's shadow of mortality up on the screen one more time. Now the one thing. With the Sokens in, um, is these are chump blockers. You know, it's just making sure this doesn't have mm -hmm. flying or anything. Uh, just a seven seven, nothing special about it. So this, oh, but there it is. Yeah, throws of chaos. chaos. Oh, wow, Nikachu, this is huge. So this isn't for sure over. You have to not hit one of your small spells. You got to hit one of your twelve or higher. Right here we go. <laughs> what is it? Rolling the dice. Looks like a scion from this quick glance. <laughs> it's 15, 15. damage. <laughs> and Corbin will take it to game three. Wow. You know, this is the first game three we have had on uh, this week's Midco Masters as well. Yeah. <laughs> it's just been two O's bashes so far. But uh, wow, there it is right off the top to be able to send this to the game three. This calibrated blast deck. Is well, I honestly don't know what I want to play against more next round or less, I should say. Yeah, the like I said, you know, against combo decks, you know, you don't if you don't have a really strong clock, I always just think, well, if my clock is four or five turns, then you're basically letting the combo deck draw five, four to five cards. And yeah, do I like my odds. Well, sometimes I don't. Yeah, that's fair. That is definitely fair. I wish if, anyways, if Corbin would advance i wish i could you know borrow your merfolk deck for a round because that looked uh <laughs> that looked a lot more trivial <laughs> you could borrow some tashanda's tide binders would work yes, perfectly please. in your deck that was the one thing we weren't sure of if calibrated blast the ability actually stacks did you know for sure it did or so, you so what happened yeah. was like before the match started i hadn't played against calibrated blast since tide binder got printed but i yeah. knew there was like i I was like 99% certain there was a trigger. Like it interacts with this card. But then Corbin Corbin plays Calibrated Blast. I'm like, where's where's this trigger that I'm supposed to target? There, there was nothing. And I'm like, oh my God. Did I just play so silly for the last like th three or four turns? Yeah, did I let it resolve useless. thinking yeah, I was going to be able to trick it? But Yeah, so yeah. anyway, let it resolve. Oh, there's the trigger. Yes, of course. There it. All right. Okay, now I don't look so silly anymore. Yeah, Spike and I genius. were in the booth and we were kind of looking at it and we were both questioning, like, does this actually trigger the ability uh, after <laughs> Calibrated Blast or does it just happen along with the resolution of the spell? And uh, once we we were already talking, like, how good of a matchup it's going to be for you, Nikachu, and Spike called it nearly unlosable from your side. And then once we saw the triggered ability, we're like, all right, it's unlosable. <laughs> like, for yeah. sure, that just seems so good. I keep. I just had to protect my baby. That Tishana's Tide Binder. I did yeah. everything to protect that card and threatened to bounce it. I had that Ottawara. I had the, the Ether Spell Bomb. Yeah. yeah, Spell Bomb with Vile to be able to bounce it back. You were uh, really doing kickflips left and right. That's for sure. 
Actually, so we're getting ready to uh, go back into the match here. We're just letting them uh, sideboard here real quick. Um, but the one thing that I was kind of happy about uh, as far as your Merfolk list now is you didn't have the um, the Trickster. You didn't have the Trickster. So right. I felt like my Territorial Kabus were going to be a little bit better. But even oh. that being said, like if I attack, you can still, you know, trick out the ability and still kill it that way. Mm-hmm. But I felt a little better with that. Not that it ended up coming up. Oh, it's way—it's a way better card. Yeah, like Trickster is very good against that card. Yeah, I had to forego the Trickster because I got to keep these decks twenty-eight cards different. I got to save Trickster for some later deck lists. You know, Trickster going to come out next week. I got to so, save it for that. Can you give us a little hint into your next week? Are you maybe going to try to run it back again, or do you, are you do not want to give out your secrets quite yet? I don't know if I'm going to go for a, you know, I was hoping to save like a traditional deck for the very finals. So I don't know if it's going to be this or maybe, you know, I could, I could splash red for maybe flame of a Uh, There's a lot of other, uh, you know, nifty ways I could play Merfolk. So I'm going to, you know, I'm going to consider my options. I love it. Well, we'll save that for future weeks here on Mitko Master. But for now, we're coming into game three. The loser of this game is out and will be our first player eliminated from season one here of go masters here so really big game and we have the turn one thought sees from aspiring spike to take the chaos and now we have dothy voidwalker coming down uh with a couple break the ice to be able to destroy some lands depending if corbin plays nice into it so if corbin never plays mm. one of these colorless lands Ooh. i spoke too soon it would have been much much better for him that's for sure you have to go for it here. I mean, this is just sinkhole in modern. Yeah, you have to go for it. And honestly, I totally get it for Spike or for Corbin as well. Like you want to get that card in play as you only have um, your your throws of chaos. You only have one more way to get calibrated blast. So I totally get it. Ooh, it's not going to work again, though, Naked Chew. <laughs> <laughs> there might be one more turn. God. But actually, I, I'm probably Corbin's going to play around uh, the second, third, fourth, or how many break the ices uh, he can possibly imagine Spike has. Yeah, you yeah. Know, fool I... me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. Well, let's see if this Emrakul gets discarded. <laughs> Looks like Corbin saw the line of don't discard Emrakul. Oh, yeah, right. Yeah, you got to protect it from the Dothy Voidwalker. Yeah. Rashing in for three. Corbin's at 13. Spike is at 18. So out of range of at least one blast from the calibrated blast. Okay, I have been reading Sunken Citadel wrong. I, I always thought that card had produced colorless mana in it. Mm-hmm. It does not. So yeah, Break oh, okay. the Ice does not deal with that. I think I said that in the last round. So I'm sure uh, Twitch chat eating me alive here. Sorry, Twitch chat. Yeah, like you said earlier, this is an unfortunate mat- uh, matchup pairing for Corbin because he's hoping to one-shot everyone, but actually he basically has to two-shot everyone. Yeah, pretty much, you know? I mean, there's definitely a chance, you know, if Corbin were to pull this out that he could one-shot me. Um, now I have some counter spells as well to be able to maybe interact with this a bit, but here is Aspiring Spike's Lightning Helix Machine where you can just gain three every single turn, but thing is with corbin being able to cast calibrated blast next turn and then flash back it the turn after just kidding dothy voidwalkers in play so there won't be mm-hmm. any flashbacking um so yeah we got ley line of the void in play yep exactly so yeah spikes looking pretty decent it looked like it might come down to another situation for corbin where he's going to top the tap the top of the deck and uh draw a second calibrated blast off the top Sort of reminds me of these sneak and show legacy matches where you get hit with Emrakul for 15, but you've not actually killed your opponent, and then they're struggling to find another creature in order to finish the job. But in this case, there's no cantrips. You have to just rely off the top of your deck. Yeah, the old-fashioned way. No ponders and brainstorms here. You just got to get lucky the way Richard Garfield intended. That's right. (laughs) All right, so Corbin deciding if it wants... If he wants to fire this off here, is there any reason to think about doing anything else? I guess maybe Soken's in here to attack a little bit. 
Well, maybe that option was available, but in the end, we're going to be playing a Throws of Chaos, which, of course, is going to find our Calibrated Blast. Yeah, I think this is the better play, just in general, too. Sokinson doesn't even race the three life you're gaining from Dothy, so I think you kind of just have to give that up. And uh, let's see how much damage it is. Is it a large amount, like 15? Or is it a sad amount? That's big. It's big. Down to six That's life. Hammer cool. E, uh, yep. With a with a gemstone cavern off the top, and honestly, there's not many draws here for Spike anymore. That like he really deeply cares about. It's just can he dodge for one more turn to be able to ultimate Liliana? As far as what Spike knows. We know that the Selkin Zen can at least attack Liliana to prevent this for one more turn. Or for a couple more turns, you know, if, if uh, that is the way that we do it. But we shall see. I think it's just going to come down to Corbin's top deck here, Nikachu. It might, yeah. Uh, but even if the ultimate goes off, I mean, it just parts away with two lands. You can still top deck a Calibrated Blast with the Soka Zen in hand. Yeah, that's true. That is true. Have to play the Sogans in that way instead of uh, casting it, but yeah, or channeling it, but yeah, I agree. Channeling it just doesn't seem great. Oh. All right, big draw step. Mm -hmm. Oh, what is it, Corbin? Uh, uh, oh. 15. Power. Mana value. Wait, wait a minute. How did this happen? Huh? I thought that's supposed uh, to get exiled. Not maybe was the hand not sized enough where this other throws of chaos was actually still in it? I am confused here. Yeah, how did Dothy Voidwalker not exile the throws of chaos? Can chat well, help us here? I think it was exiled. I'm guessing just the hand that was off to the left side of the hand. Oh, is there <laughs> oh maybe there's another card that we can't see. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Otherwise, right. nothing makes yeah, sense yeah, yeah. That, that did get exiled. But wow, looks like all this anticlimactic stuff. <laughs> Our director was just doing a great job at hyping up the, the thought that there could be a top deck when, well, it looks like Carbon already had it.